Right, so scoring. Now, I realised so about a month or so ago, whenever I was doing the subjects for the next couple of months, um, I'm teaching you all these techniques about how to get the most tricks, all sorts of card play stuff, all sorts of bidding stuff, in an attempt to get you to be able to win at duplicate bricks. That's really what I'm teaching you how to do. Now, whether you use it to beat your mates around the kitchen table or play here and beat the other people on a certain afternoon or evening, that's up to you. But I'm teaching you an efficient duplicate bridge system. And that's all well and good, but you actually need to know what the scoring is. And I suddenly realised really, you don't really know what the scoring is all about. You know you get 620 for a vulnerable game and you can look on the back and I got 140. But how that translates into percentages is never really explained properly. You just kind of learn that 100% is good and 0% is bad and just kind of accept that the magic box tells you whether you did good or not. What I'm going to try and do is explain to you how those scores are worked out. It is a bit mathsy, but it's not over, over your head mathsy, I hope. Um, but it's actually a fairly simplistic system as to how they get converted. Now what they get converted into is match points. So when Bridge was originally invented, it was invented for four people, as we all played, four person game, and it was invented that North-South play East-West, and that with Rubber Bridge was the first scoring, uh, well, contract bridge, and it was he who dealt the cards, or he who rather got the cards dealt, scored best. So if you got dealt all the points, you would win. And that's a rubbish way to score. If you just sit there all night and get 1 point, 4 points, 3 points, 10 points, you're not going to win. Because those who get 20 points, 16 points, 18, they're going to win because they score more. So what we soon realised was that that is a poor way of scoring. You can bet on that, but then it's more about who gets dealt the cards. So then they thought, oh well, if we play the same hand, then there's no <coughs> luck. You get the same cards as them, and they get the same cards, and that's where duplicate bridge was invented, if you like. Now you needed a way of converting all of the scores, the thousands and the small scores, into kind of an even playing field, so each hand was worth the same amount. Because if one hand was a slam and worth 2,000 points, the other 20 hands worth 100 points are equivalent to that one hand. So what that means is one hand is weighted a lot heavier than the other hand. So what match points looks to solve was to make each hand worth an exactly equal amount. So if you do really well on 90% of the hands and you don't do so well on the other 10%, you will still win. Whereas it could be if you don't have if it's un unfairly matched, if you do badly on the one hand that's important that afternoon, you will lose, even if you're perfect <coughs> with the rest of it's unfair. So what match points were match points were created for was to try to balance it out. So you have to convert the score you get on that hand into a new scoring system, which is match points. So the way it works really is a ranking. Whoever gets the best score gets the most number of match points. Whoever gets the second best score gets the next best number of match points, and so on and so forth, working down the ranking until eventually you end up with someone with the worst score who gets no match points. And your match points accumulate over the afternoon so you, or evening, so you play 20 <coughs> hands, you get 120 match points, and that will work out as a certain percentage of the maximum attainable. So if you got the best score on every single hand, you will get 100% of the match points. That doesn't really happen, because no one is perfect like that. And even if you were, you won't get 100% because there's some fortune in there sometimes. You can't get 100%, really. So when you get good scores, is you start to get a feeling for good scores being somewhere in the high 50s, early 60s percent of the total score. So that's why the bridge mate shows you a percentage, because it shows you how much of the match points you attained. Now the way a match point conversion happens is as follows. I'll just write, I'll just pretend that we've got some results here on this board, and I'll show you how it differs. So um, let's just write some different scores. Now this is going to challenge me because I'm making this up on the spot, so I've got to work it out. The bridge mate obviously does it like that. Um, we, uh, four, half plus one, six, six, six. Yeah, I'm doing all that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now first thing to notice is all of the scoring is from a north-south perspective. So plus 620 means that north-south scored 620. <laughs> you could think of it from your perspective, if you're east-west, that you lost 620. But all of the scoring is assumed to be from a north-south perspective. So minus 100 means that north-south lost 100, or east-west gained 100, however you want to think about it. But it's all from a north-south perspective, so that you can have a plus or a minus to dictate whether it falls in this column or that column. 
You could have east-west plus north-south plus, that would also work. It, the way that it is worked out is that you have minuses and plus to dictate who gains the points. So if north-south lost 100, east-west gained 100, they are synonymous of the same thing. So on this hand, we can see north-south 1 played east-west 6, north-south 2 played east-west 5. These are your pair numbers. This is how you identify who you are. So on 1 versus 6, north-south 1 made a vulnerable game. Looks like 4 spades or 4 hearts. North South 2 made plus 1 in a pass score, so they were in 3 hearts plus 1. They didn't bid game, so they got a worse score. They made 4 hearts or 4 spades plus 1. They made tick, just like, not, just like pair 1. They only bid 3, but only made 3. And they obviously bid too much, whether they bid a slam and went 1 up, or whether they bid game and didn't make it. Okay? So all of these scores is kind of a realistic what might happen on a random board. North South looked to have some close major game, is my feeling, for these scores I just made up. So now that needs to be converted into, into kind of an equal spread of who gets the most match points. So what happens is, you don't have to understand this bit, but you times the number of pairs by 2 and then knock 1 off. So 6 times 2 is 12, knock 1 hot off. Or you could say subtract that by 1 and then times it by 2. Essentially a top is 10 match points. Now you don't really need to understand why or how that is, it's so that you end up with a zero, because it'll go 10, then 8, then 6, then 4, then 2, then 0. So you need 6 possible scores, times by 2 for a reason, which I'll explain in a minute. So the best score from North-South's perspective is pair 3, okay, because they got 650. Now notice they were 30 points better than the 620, but match points doesn't care about the absolute value, it doesn't care that 650 is very close to 620. It doesn't even care, if it was possible, that if that was 649 and that was 650. It's not about the margin of difference, it's about who is the best score. So the absolute values don't actually mean that much, it's about who comes out on top. So what that means is, North-South would get 10 match points on this particular hand because they got the best score, i.e. 100% of the match points. That means, unfortunately for East-West, they get zero. It always has to add up to 10, otherwise something goes wrong with the maths. As I say, it is a little bit massy. Now the next best score is 1 and 4. So they both got an equal second, didn't they? 620 is the next best score. Now what you would like to do is put 8 there and 8 there going down on the rung. The problem is you can't have two 8s because then you end up with too many match points distributed. So they essentially share 8 and 6, these two guys, which means they get... 7, and they get 3. So that's see how it builds up. The next best score is these people, north south 2, they got 170. So they get, it's gone 10, then 8, then 6, so we've now got 4, which means east west get 6. Then the next best were 5, so they get 2 and 8, and the worst was 6, because they went up. So they get 0, and they get 10. Now, the way that is all, you don't need to be able to do that on the fly. But the point is, the way it is worked out is that the absolute scores don't actually matter. It's simply put in a rank. You are the best, you are the next best, you are the next best. This is how many match points I'm giving you for that result. The important point behind that is that if this, if this, the, this pair miraculously made, oh, I don't know, 990 or some, some crazy score, let's just make up some random score that they could have had, plus 1440. They somehow made six no trumps when everyone else is making just game. Okay? Either East West defended like they were on North South side, or they got extremely lucky. Something happened, a freak result, if you like. Their match points does not improve. They could have been doubled and made over tricks. They got the best score, so they got 100% of the match points. They can't get any more than that. Now, obviously, if they'd made this, they'd be more confident that they'd got a top. But it's about the field. If yours is the best score there, you can't do any better. So the fact that they were 30 points ahead, or 820 points ahead, is the same. That feels wrong, because you think, well, if I've made a slam, surely that's worth more than just making game plus one. But it's not scored like that. It's match points is kind of deceptive, in that when you get a big score, yes, you're likely to get a good score match points, but it's not about the absolute value. It's about how you did compared to everyone else. Which is why I'm always talking about everyone else has the same hand as you. If your hand has two points, you've got to do the best you can. If the best you can is not is save one trick 
that might make a big difference. Because when you talk about margin of error, 30 points here, if let's say the defenders, going back to the realistic score of 650, the margin of error here, let's say east-west led something that gave north-south that extra trick. Now, when you're a defender, you might feel, oh, I gave a trick away, oh, so what, they were making game anyway, is how you would instinctively feel. But actually, if you see here, that 30 points made north-south 3 have the best score which meant they got all of the match points. So that over trick, that when they go from 620 to 650, that over trick has cost them all of the match points. They might as well have given away the entire hand because they've given away the worst score from their perspective. So you can see here, that over trick, going from 10 tricks to 11 tricks, has made all the difference from north-south and east-west perspective. Positive for north-south, negative for east-west. So what match points is all about is making more tricks than everyone else. If you're in the same contract as everybody in the room, if you make the most tricks, you've got the best score. So the 20s and 30s can matter, and in fact do matter a lot. Now obviously, you have to bid reasonably. This team here, who didn't bid the game, have been punished for not bidding the game, because instead of getting 620 and sharing the spoils with those other two, they only got 170, which means because they didn't bid game, they have suffered but at least they made the right number of tricks. So therefore they beat them. You can see these two were obviously in the same contract or similar contracts, some kind of part score. But because two made more tricks than five, two got four match points, five only got two match points. So you can see how contract is obviously important. If you're in a silly contract and you're bound to go on, you're not necessarily going to get a good score. If you're in a contract where you're nowhere near high enough, you're not necessarily going to get a good score. But if you're in the reasonable ballpark of the correct contract, the whole match point play comes down to how many tricks you can make. All about over tricks. So it might be that this person, North South 3, they took a very risky line. They decided to gamble their contract to try and make that extra 30. Because that extra 30, 30 pushes them up to become the best score. They might have took a finesse that could have lost them the whole contract. But they did it to be greedy to try and get that over trick. Now I'm not saying greed is necessarily leads you to success. But what I am saying is that match point doesn't care that the difference between those is negligible. In fact, it, it is the opposite of that. The fact that it's negligible is irrelevant because the fact that you've got a better score means you get more match points. So what I'm trying to say really is in the card play, try to extract as many tricks as possible whilst taking reasonable risks. Obviously, don't risk everything all the time. There's a fine balance. But taking risks in the scoring is what match in the play rather is what match point of scoring is all about. It's about getting the extra trick. You can notice a good match point of player is always a good card player, not necessarily always a good bidder. You will find that there are some people who score well who you think in the bidding that they don't really know what's going on. That's probably because they don't really know what's going on. But when they land in that contract that you happen to land in, if they make more tricks than you, it doesn't matter. It's all about who gets the most tricks. Match pointed is focused so intensely on the over trick. If everyone's in four hearts tick and you're in four hearts plus one, you might as well have been in seven hearts tick because you've scored the best score. You follow me? Now, on the flip side, for those of you who went to the Teams Taster yesterday, Teams is all about the absolute score. So Teams, these two scores here, are hardly different because Teams is scored differently. 